this week on the Trend Out Loud podcast. I feel like the majority of women are are love are, are they're creatures of love. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I think they have the abilities to look deeper than material things. And a lot of women these days are are, are afraid to admit that because of the societal pressures and because of all the ish that men have put some of these women through. What up? It's your boy, Trent Out Loud, and I'm back with another episode. Let's go. All right, yesterday was a slow news cycle. Today, we got a jam-packed show. It's going to be at least a 30-minute, but let's get into it. Um, all right, so Melissa Barrera. I hope I'm pronouncing her name right. Y'all know I cannot pronounce names. Um, anyways, Melissa has been dropped from Screen 7 following a social media post that she made um, October the 7th about the war. Let me read the post to you. Gaza is currently being treated like a concentration camp, cornering everyone together with nowhere to go, no electricity, no water, is genocide and ethnic cleansing. After being fired from Screen 7, she posted, at the end of the day, I'd rather be excluded for who I include than to be included for who I exclude. Now, regardless of what, what side of the uh of the of the regardless of whose side you're on um that last post is is kind of cool um i'd rather be excluded for who i include than to be included for, for to be included for who i exclude i thought that was really dope so yeah she has been um she has been dropped from the scream uh franchise and for those of you who know or might not know or follow the the screen series uh, scream series She's large in that series. So it's like, what is going to now happen with the movie? They haven't begun filming yet. But, um, you know, people are like, there's some people who are boycotting. There's some people who are like, yes, you should have let her go. Um, but nobody can deny that she's a huge part of the franchise. So, you know, is the movie going to work without her? A, are they even going to continue making it? I mean, I assume so since they just announced that they dropped her. Um, and I think the movie theater actually put out something too. The movie, uh, where is it? Oh, I read that on Hollywood Reporter. Hold on, let me find that. We have zero tolerance for anti-Semitism or the incitement of hate in any form, including false reference to genocide ethnic cleansing, Holocaust distortion, or anything that flagrantly crosses the line into hate speech. So they have the, the studio and the studio, uh, it's a, the spokesperson for Spyglass um, has put that out. Um, anyway, so um, I, like, I don't know, is the movie going to be made? Or are people, are people going to, if they do make it, are people going to boycott it? Let me know what you guys think in the uh, comment section below. Uh, do you think uh, th they're going to end up making the movie? And if they do make the movie, um, do you think people are going to boycott it? And also, do you think they should have dropped Melissa from the Scream series uh, for making that post about the war? Lauren Hill and the Fugees has postponed their tour. Um, I totally forgot that this tour was even going on. I want to actually go to this tour. I mean, how many times is Lauren and the Fugees going to reunite and go back on tour? I think I, I want to try to catch this. But um, they have actually postponed their tour because Lauren announced that she was suffering, suffering from um, vocal cord um, strain. She has been taking medication for it. But uh, she feels like she needs some time off. Um, and they said that the tour is going to resume in 2004. She does not sound like Lauren, so um, I believe it. But, you know, there's people speculating that Lauren, you know, just hates being on tour. She's always showing up late, etc. So um, I personally think... Um, that it, that it's true. Um, and also to like to reinsure that they are adding more dates in 2024. So it's not like they're postponing it and then like, oh, it's postponed to an unknown date. You know what I mean? It's like, yo, it's postponed for a month, two months. And when we come back, we're not only going to do the dates that we miss, but we're going to add more dates. So, um, I'm, I'm team Lauren. That's the queen. Um, you're never gonna. It's gonna be very, very hard for her to ever do anything 
um, for me to say anything bad about her. So I believe um, that Lauren definitely has strained vocal cords. Uh, rest up, Queen. And I definitely, definitely want to try to catch um, Lauren Hill and the Fugees. Let me know what y'all think below. Is Lauren skipping out? Does Lauren hate touring? Or is she really, does she really have strained vocal cords and she's going to come out bigger and better in 2024? Miss Jordan Woods is back in the news. Uh, Jordan Woods, Kylie Jenner's ex-best friend. If y'all remember, she was caught grinding on Mr. Toronto man, uh, Tr uh, Tristan Thompson a couple of years ago. And then Kylie and the whole Jenner and, and, um, Kardashian clan kind of, you know, X'd her out. Anyways, she's back in the news. She was wearing a jacket on, on the lapel of the jacket or the, the corner of the jacket. It said, I don't need your situation. And everyone is like, yo, is she throwing shade back at Kylie? Um, for those of you who remember when she was on the Red Table Talk, she said this. I'm no home wrecker. Right. I would never try to hurt someone's home. Right. I never was try to steal someone's man. I don't need your situation. So that quote went viral. So it's like, why is she back now, you know, you know, doing photo shoots and having that quote um, on the jacket? Is she throwing shade back at Kylie? But, yo, from what I remember, her and Kylie are back being friends. Like, I remember just a couple of months ago where they were out having dinner and everything was OK. So I don't know, like, if everything is OK, if she's back in the clan, then why she would go out and wear this jacket? It's like, but yeah. And, and she came out and said, she came out, um, I think it was on the shade room, and she goes, just to be clear, there's no shade here, just a quote that we can all relate to. So it's like, she's trying to just, I, I think she is actually just trying to um, kind of capitalize on the quote that she's, known for, that she's known for, I don't need your situation. But at the same time, if you know that quote, is hurtful to your friend, your ex best friend, or your now your present best friend, or the the best friend that you're trying to, um, you know, get back into a relationship with. Why would you try to capitalize on that? And you know that's gonna bring up old memories, and you know that's gonna hurt your friend. Like that's just stupid. I mean, there's other ways um, to make money than awful quotes. So I think that was that was pretty stupid of her to to put that quote out there, regardless if there is intent or shade or not. It's bringing up old feelings. People in the public are going to start talking about it. And that's the last thing you want to remember. So that was stupid of um, Jordan Woods to do, um, even though I'm a Jordan Woods fan because I think she's hot. Shout out to Jordan Woods. But um, let me know what y'all think. Um, is Jordan uh, throwing shade? Uh, is she just trying to capitalize off her quote? And if she is, do you not agree with me to think that's stupid to try to capitalize off of a quote that is going to hurt your best friend? Or, and, and the family that you're trying to get back in close with. Y'all let me know. There is a new census report done in the U.S. that says by 2060, one, more than one in four Americans will be uh, Latino. And um, uh, I don't necessarily have a, a take on this. I just wanted to highlight that because y'all know that I love um <laughs> Anything South American, South American culture, Latino culture, Latino culture, Latin X culture. Yo, I am a big fan. So, you know, 2060, you know, all praise to the Lord. I will still be around to see it, but bring more Latinos, bring more Latin ladies. You know what I'm saying? Like holla at your boy. Um, Y'all know that I'm a big fan of Colombia, DR. Shout out to Medellin, Cartagena, Sosua, um, Puerto Plata, um, Punta Cana. Like, those are my vacation spots. So I just wanted to shout out uh, my Latin brothers and sisters out there. You know what I'm saying? I'll let your boy. Hola, mami. Target has come out and said that they are making changes to their self-checkout line due to theft. Um, and now you will no longer be able to check out more than 10 items um, on your own. And um, I mean, look, I don't really know how I feel about this. Um, you're never going to stop people from stealing at a self-checkout. People are always going to try to get one up on you. People are always going to feel comfortable stealing from a, bil a billion dollar company that has record profits. You're probably not going to steal from the mom and pop store. You probably know the employees there, so you wouldn't do that. But, you know, you're... 
you know, you don't have to be a criminal to like to steal from Target. There's there's mad people that do that and they feel no way about doing it. I mean, yes, t- let's, let's just be clear. It is still criminal to steal, but I'm just telling you how people think in their mind. It's like, yo, you're you made forty billion dollars and you're sitting on your yacht, whatever, blah, blah. I'm I'm gonna take an extra chocolate bar or I'm gonna take an extra pack of socks. That's just how people are gonna think. So um, I don't I don't know how the, this 10 limit is going to really change it because they're just going to put nine items and steal the 10th item. Like, I don't think this is really going to slow stuff down. Um, anyways, let me know what y'all uh, think. Uh, do you think this is going to slow down theft? More importantly, well, I don't know if you're going to admit this, but do you have you ever taken a little extra item or accidentally forgot to uh, scan an item? Let me know in the comment section below. Boosie badass, my boy Boosie. Um, Boosie is um, back in the news. Yo, Boosie stays in the headlines, yo. Uh, Boosie is in the news going after everybody in the music industry. Uh, Now he's going after YG and uh, Rod Wave and saying that they have, uh, that they're taking his songs and sampling it without his permission. Um, I was listening to Academics yesterday and um ak was saying that um if you're signed to uh, a publisher then and and if your publisher owns your music if you want to clear a sample you don't have to go to the artist you just have to go to the publisher and if they clear it then you use your sample so we've heard this before where artist has said like beyonce is taking my song i can't remember i think it was khalees or somebody that was like Yo, Beyonce took my song, etc. But if your song is owned by a publisher and you don't have those rights to that music, the artist doesn't have to go to the artist. They just have to go to the person who owns the music. But like what Ak was saying is that he feels like he like Boosie is like, yes, maybe my publisher owns it and you don't have to. But yo, this is hip hop. Like, come to me and kind of get my co-sign. You know, maybe give me a little, you know, 10, 20 G's to be like, you know what I mean? Like on the side to you know, as a, as a respect thing, as like, yo, I'm just checking in. And listen, I'm a man of contracts. I'm a man of, of, of the law and principle and all that stuff. So I get where the, where YG and Rod Wave is coming from. But I also kind of agree with, with Boosie on this one, because for me, if I was an artist and I wanted to use, for example, I don't know, whoever, whatever, some, some song out there, I would want the artist to kind of co-sign it. I would want the art, the artist to, to like agree with it and be like, yo, not only can you use it, although you don't have to, but yo, respect for coming to me and yo, I like the song or maybe like, Hey, maybe add this since it's the person's original song. I'd want their co-sign. Let me know what y'all think, man. If, if, if somebody, if a company owes a song, should you just go right to the song and not care what the artist thinks um, if you have that right and you just want to use the paperwork or should you go to the company first, obviously get the clearance and then go to the artist and say, yo, just heads up. Your publisher has cleared this. What do you think? Are you cool with me um, using it? Happy birthday. Shout outs to David. Some of you call him Davito, Danivito, Vito, whatever. Yo, Afro. I was actually watching an interview and he said, he, his name is David, so I'm going to call him David. Um, but Afro Beats megastar David's birthday was yesterday, and it kind of brought up this competition thing of, like, who is the Afro Beats king? Um, I, th- I can't remember. I think it was uh, some comedian was like, yo, shout out to the king um, of Afro Beats, uh, David, happy birthday. And people were like, yo, respect to David, but Wizkid and Burner Boy um, are, are the king of Afro Beats. And... Look, I, I did, I went down a little rabbit hole. I listened to, uh, WizKids, um, you know, top five songs. I listened to David's top five songs. I listened to Burner and I got to give this to Burner, man. I think Burner is the king of Afrobeats. They're all dope. I mean, WizKid has some, they all have legendary music that we'll listen to 15, 20, 30 years from now. Um, you know, the, these are the three guys who kind of main, made, Afro beats mainstream um, to us people here in, in North America and like the like the a white audience um, and um, I don't know man to me I think when it's all said and done all said and done um, you know Burner is like 
the Bob Marley of Afrobeats. I feel like that no woman, no cry, I'm Buffalo soldier. And you know what I mean? Like those kind of songs, like that is the, the essence of reggae music. And then of course, you know, there's, you know, Buju and Beanie and, and um, Movado and Vibes Cartel, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Let's not even get into the reggae. Let's stay in the Afrobeat. But um, yeah, anyways, if you ask me, the 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 king of um of, and the leg the, the most legendary of those three artists um our burner our burner uh let me know uh what y'all think in the comments between those three who is the king of Afrobeats? my question of the day is what do women really want i saw this post on social media let me play it for you i'm simple Deep down inside, I'm simple. And it don't look like it. It look like I gotta, I gotta pull up with the Bentley. Mm -hmm. If I ain't got it, I can't even approach you. Um, it's not necessarily that, you know. Um, have a good car for you, not for society or what you think I may view you as. You know what I mean? I have a nice car, but I worked for it, and that's fine. But it, that car doesn't define who I am. Mm -hmm. People p place value on materialistic things. These things can come and go. Get what you can afford. And that's a man to me. If you're taking care of your own shit, providing for yourself, that's a man to me. No matter what is it, a Honda, Altima, Kia, whatever that is, don't have nobody make you feel less than who you are because of what you drive. If I like you, I like you. Because again, I got my own shit. I'm not looking for a come up. I'm not looking yeah. for that. So um, in the comments section underneath that video, um, there was a lot of dudes that were like, yo, protect this woman at all costs. I wish all women thought like this or, yo, they don't make women like this anymore. And um, first of all, this girl is this lady is young. First of all, she's not like an old 40, 50 year old woman woman. Um, I personally think that most women, the majority of women think like this. But I just think that. Two things why they don't, most women don't vocalize this, uh, like how she vocalized it. Um, one, because they've almost like given up on men where they've had a bunch of bad relationships and, and loving men that have cheated on them or have been physically abusive or verbally abusive to them. And now they've just kind of like given up on the, on the, on the fantasy of love and they're like, Yo, if I can't find love, then yo, I might as well just find a, a man that could take care of me. But I think at the core, that's not what they want, and they want that man that they can love um, and 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 help and and nurture and and love um, and, and have that 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 fantasy relationship that um, most young ladies develop at like from a teenage year, but years, but then kind of give up on that hope. Um, as they get older and, and get into bad relationships. And um, and then secondly, I think it's just like society now um, is it will, will like ish on the girls that say that they want somebody that's, you know, just do your own thing and whatever, blah, blah. And it's like, girl, don't, don't, you know what I mean? Don't, don't settle for that. Yo, girl, get this or whatever. So I think like the societal pressures that are placed um, on women, like, don't be a stupid girl, like go after a man that has this or whatever. And I just, th I just feel that like some women are more, um, are more confident to be like, I don't care what people are going to say on my Instagram. I don't care what's, what, what happened to me in the past. I'm still, um, you know, looking for love. I don't need a man with a car. I don't need a man for this, et cetera, et cetera. You know, um, I'm still in my love phase and I'm still looking for my man. So, um, I, I do feel like, the majority, um, the majority, I would say nine out of 10 women feel more like this, this woman here that she, that you don't need a man, um, to have a nice car. Or you don't need a man, um, that has money and you don't need a man have all those extra things. And the majority of women, um, really just want, to be in a loving, nurturing, um, you know, fruitful relationship. I, I feel like the majority of women are are love are, are they're creatures of love. You know what I'm saying? And 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 I think they have the abilities to look deeper than material things. And a lot of women these days are 
are, are afraid to admit that because of the societal pressures and because of all the ish that men have put some of these women through um, and they're jaded. So anyways, that's my take. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. Do you think women are just, yo, I need a man to have a Range Rover. I need him to have a Lambo. I need him to have all this. I need a man that has money and I'm not looking at these bum dudes. Or do you think that that's just, that's just talk and they don't really actually really want those kind of dudes. They want a dude that, that they can love, um, but they're just jaded. Let me know what y'all think. All right. Lastly, um, in sports news, um, LeBron James has hit uh, 39,000 points, the first player in the NBA to hit 39,000 points. Um, this is not really that big of a celebration because every point that LeBron scores after he passed Kareem, he will be the first to do that. So his next bucket, he'll be the first player, NBA player in NBA history to hit 39,002 points. Um, not taking anything away from the feet, but I'm just saying like, it's not that big of an announcement. Um, and, you know, obviously he's going to hit, you know, 40,000 soon. So, but um, it got me to thinking, I actually think LeBron James, the rest of his career, it's going to be him just breaking the stats, him just breaking records. And it's because, because of, conditioning and the the technology that we have right now he's going to be able to play and, and he does an extra extra work like tom brady like taking care of his body so i think the rest of lebron's careers is just going to be him breaking stats because he has played for so long you know what i'm saying like he's going to be the person who went, went to the most finals and maybe even lost the most finals because he's lost six uh, you know he's going to be the 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 nba player with the most playoff appearances the nba, the NBA player with the, this one with that whatever and i think it's going to just add to his legacy not taking anything away i just think that the remaining of his the remainder of his career is just going to be breaking um stats and i don't think he's going to win um any more championships um does that make him the GOAT, in my opinion, no. He could sit there and keep on breaking as many records as, as he wants because in 20 or 30 years or 20 years from now when, you know, I don't remember how long, I, I think Kobe played, if I'm not mistaken, 20 years or 19 years, Jordan 15 or 16. But in 10 years from now when players play 30 years because, you know, playing into your 50s is going to be possible because the technology, people are going to break that record. So to me, records and stats – are not what makes the GOAT conversation. Um, it's championships, what you do in finals. Um, you know what I mean? Like team. Um, let's, it's just to me that the, those kind of numbers, um, it's not for me. Um, the GOAT conversation. You know, Jordan won six championships. Um, he's never lost in a championship. He's never gone to a game seven. Um, that, that, those are the things to me that, that, that make, Jordan the GOAT. And um, if LeBron continues not winning championships, but breaking um, these stat records, personally for me, it doesn't mean anything. But like I always say when I talk about LeBron, I think off the court, LeBron is, is the GOAT. He has, nobody has done more for the game off the court um, than LeBron James. Um, his, his, his black charter schools, uh, you know, his black family, uh, you know, his kids, his dedication to his wife, like, you know, what he's done for the, the culture, uh, you know, the black culture, I salute 100,000%, man. Like, and, and there's so many other things that he's done, does, right? Like, the, just even his activism, the things that he talks about on Twitter, a lot of athletes, you know, you know, don't have the, the, the balls to do the, some of the things that LeBron said. Like, he's on the, in the, in the, in the family of, of Ali, right? If you, if you, for those of you who don't know, um, you know, what Ali did and Ali, um, stood up and actually lost his, I don't know if he lost his title or just his gaming, um, his, 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 whatever, his license to box. Um, but anyways, um, shout out to LeBron James. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. It's your boy, turn out loud. Peace! Go to signupexpert.com forward slash Trent. And then once you sign up for all betting apps and get all your bonuses and get all your rewards, go to your app store and download BetStamp and use promo code TOL.